What up YouTube? Got me something new today. Thought you guys might be interested in it. Uh, I got this today in the same manner that I got this bad boy, right? I ordered it sight unseen at a great price. And honestly, with these Pro Customs, I didn't even think it was going to show up. Uh, these things are exceedingly rare. Uh, and so I had given up on the prospect that this thing would show up. Uh, here we are at the end of Ju January. And uh, I got a call saying my transfer went through and I needed to come pick it up. And I had almost completely forgotten about ordering this thing. Uh, my credit card was charged, so that was... Uh, <laughs> That was fun to explain, but um, I went and picked it up today. I put approximately 10 <laughs> rounds down this thing, but I wanted to give you all my initial impressions of the Para USA uh, Pro Custom 40, uh, I guess P1640, uh, P4016. So, first things first, how can I always say that? First things first. This is the box it came in, and you'll notice uh, as different from my other para uh, box that I got. That one, this one came in a very nice green box. I'll have to dig it out if you're really interested, but go watch that video. It was really long, and the whole first half of that movie video is looking at the box. So let's get right to it. Um, cardboard box all right that was my initial impression of this thing and I was a little disappointed but I did not care as soon as I saw this thing holy shit this thing is awesome um, it came wrapped up in plastic took that thing off just as soon as I could I didn't really care what the box else looked like uh, and uh, started to uh, mess around with this thing I, I took it immediately to the range basically uh, and put 10 rounds down it, 5 in each mag, before having oiled it or anything. So, this is what we're going to look at today. Um, let's finish up with a box here. You get your instruction manual, you get your lock, and you get uh, two mags with the base plates that work for the mag well that comes on the thing. That's great news. Uh, one thing to mention these don't look like new mags, right? I don't know why. That one's pretty... That one's already got a little bit of a uh, nasty... Not a gouge, but it's a scratch on the finish. Nothing that I'm not going to put on it myself, but it's not something you want to just open up a box of a very expensive pistol to and find. Um, this one's got the same thing. I don't, I don't know if they're tested or if they're refurbs or what. Uh, I'd like to know how someone's already putting some wear, I guess, on that point in the mags. Anyways, uh, keep that in mind. It might be part of their manufacturing process or something that's putting a little defect right there on that uh, ridge of the magazines. Um, didn't appear to do anything. Merely cosmetic. Just thought I'd point it out, though. Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe somebody else has seen it and might know more about it. Either way, it comes with two mags, comes with this foam cardboard box, and honestly, it's pretty cheap, so let's move on. No one uses these things anymore, and they probably know that, and so they probably mm, ditch, you know, intentionally give you a cheap box to uh, ditch ASAP. I know this thing's going to go in my safe, and that's it. That'll be the last time I ever see it. So, that's the box. So let's take a look at the actual pistol itself, right? Uh, first off, the finish on this is what an ion something. I'll have to look that up and post the um, post the exact name of it. Uh, it is sharp. This thing is like blacked out everywhere. No color. This thing. I mean, if you like color, it's bad. But honestly, this thing looks sweet. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that last video with the uh, this one. First thing I did was replace the uh, rod there because it was so cloudy. This one's crystal clear, uh, blows up for you in light, so no problems there. Every bit of this gun is covered in that black, including the barrel. Now, admittedly, I got the stainless version of this thing, so, you know, I don't know how the other experts come, but the Pro Custom comes with this finish. 
and it is awesome. Um, I guess you got your G10 grips uh, with this. It really lets you feels like it lets you kind of slide in here, but then provides a nice bit of traction there. Uh, I got a pair of 1911 on the side, uh, and then you got your Pro Custom 40. Looks like 40 is stamped separately or later than the Pro Custom. It's a different font. No big deal there. Match barrel. 40 Smith & Wesson, all right? This is a competition 1911. That is the entire point of this pistol is for basically USPSA. Uh, Tomasi uh, worked with Para on these guns and made himself basically a USPSA version so that it could be shot and could be purchased by us uh, amateurs over here. There's, there's, there's no other reason why you would want a 1911 and 40 if you ask me. Um, it makes major power factor and it uh, it holds, um, what is it, 16? So that's the only reason to have one of these in uh, 19, 1911 and 40, in my opinion, is for competition. And that's what I bought this for. Uh, I do shoot a little bit of USPSA. Uh, right now I'm shooting IDPA, um, but this thing will still work in some of those divisions, particularly uh, ESP and IDP if you're familiar with that at all. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind, if you do plan on shooting this in ESP like I do, uh, in IDPA, empty mag goes in, all right, no, nothing else in here. Um, this is a problem, right? That's a problem. That four is definitely a problem. We are not supposed to see a four there. We are supposed to see a three or under. Forty-three ounces is as high as you can go in ESP, I believe. I'll have to double check the rules, but I'm fairly certain. Uh, when we were dealing with this one, you know, I said in my other videos, I said I would check that out. This comes in well under. I think it comes in exactly at, at uh, forty ounces. I'll just put that in as sort of a placeholder. I mean, you you see, we got we got room there. You want the extended back plate, so probably I think what's going to happen is if you plan on shooting this for IDPA, um, I don't think the magwell is going to fit in the box anyways. So you're probably going to be dropping the magwell, and I think if you drop the magwell, you're going to get underweight. Um, you might be able to replace the magwell with some sort of polymer or plastic or something some other material I'm not certain what this material is um, but you know we can we can work with that a little bit we can get this in the ESP and I, that's what I plan on doing with it uh, whenever it is that I plan on shooting it um, that's currently not the plan uh, to shoot it particularly anytime soon uh, as we have uh, seen in other videos I'm I'm shooting this for at least the next six months or so the uh, <clears throat> Glock 41 uh, Gen 4 and CDP. So this, even though it is a 1911, will not be eligible for the CDP division because it is not a true 45. Uh, apparently CDP, it's got to be in 45 caliber. Anyways, getting sidetracked, let's go back into the gun itself. Um, front cocking serrations, Dawson Precision front sight, green fiber optic, Bomar style rear sight, with uh, height adjustment and uh, left and right um, ambidextrous safeties right because this is a USPSA gun so you might have to draw and put it shoot off handed um, fantastic sight picture Let's see if you can catch that uh, yeah let's go into that trigger pull right one of the things, all right, first off, this is a little better here. I don't know if you remember me constantly complaining about this trigger. And I do feel like this one is looser. Maybe a little bit. Uh, seems to be tightened up a little bit here, but not significantly so. You still got a big gap there, or you got a big gap there. You're not still the same trigger. It does have the over travel adjustment in there, and this thing is tuned up perfectly already. Watch this. All right, no extra past that. So, and then let's watch it come back out. Right there. So, 
that's about the pre-travel you get and then basically no over travel so the trigger is quite nice even though it's got a little slop in it I will still probably be going for one of these triggers which has no up or down movement um, so grips are fantastic safeties are fantastic hammer looks great it's got this notch in there um, extended beaver tail safety great grips not necessarily an oversized mag release which is good keeps me legal for IDPA um, full length guide rod and guys I gotta tell you I, I have not been able to get this barrel bushing off yet this thing is uh, is on there so I haven't even broken this thing down yet we will get into that um, but that bushing is uh, super tight um, exactly what you want it to be magwell um, is great but uh so let's talk about we've talked about all the great things about this let's talk about some of the negatives okay uh, there are a few negatives on this for if you wanted to pay full price for this there would some be some negatives that I would point out none of these are not correctable uh, but for the price that you're paying for this thing you could maybe get them fixed. If it was a single stack 1911 and you paid 1300 bucks for it, you would want some of these uh, corrected. And I'll show you what they are. First off, the beaver tail fit. Don't know if you can see that. We got a little, little, um, it's not fit as well as I would like right there. Okay. How minor is that? Extremely minor. Okay. Um, I went over here and I looked at the expert and I saw it's kind of similar over there. In fact, I think the expert is actually fit better than this one. This one actually has a couple of, like rough edges that I can feel right there. So I think they did a worse job on this particular one fitting that beaver tail in there than even my expert. All right, not even as much slop there. And then when I I had my gunsmith install this one on my 1911 and that thing's not moving anywhere. All right? He when he put that beaver tail on this, he was grinding and he did a phenomenal job. It is seamless in there. And that's what you would expect from a gunsmith fit beaver tail. It's a little sloppy on here. Again, I'm pointing out some just like really really minor things because this thing is pretty awesome so eh, yeah I mean the only reason it is is because I can feel it and that's why I even noticed it is because it's a little rough up there I'm probably gonna spend some time polishing that out maybe a little bit just right there where it's the frame and beaver tail is not perfect the other thing that annoyed me, I don't know if you can see that, um, whoever set this screw uh, for the magwell didn't do a very good job and actually took some of the finish off the magwell. Again, who gives a shit, right? I mean, I, I'm telling you this simply because I noticed it. And some of you guys might actually care. I, I personally don't. I mean... This is going to be a comp gun. It's going to see a lot worse. It's going to get its own scratches. And I will love the gun for those scratches. I will love the gun for that wear. I'm going to put on it because I'll know I did it. But you don't want to see some klutz putting on a magwell and scratching the thing up. And they did a pretty decent job. It's just, maybe you can see it there. It's just a little shiny right there. I mean, I, it's, it's just an annoyance. But other than that, guys, I mean, this thing... Oh, it feels good. It's uh, it's got the front checkering right there. I forgot to mention that this this one does not. Um, <laughs> let me tell you, it's it is a beautiful piece. Um, it feels great in the hand you, when you're getting a you know a good 1911 grip up here high on that safety. You can get just all kinds of traction right there with the grips, with the front strap, uh, back strap just awesome and that I just love that Bomar sight picture right there it's just so flat for you to look at so really looking forward to shooting this in the upcoming seasons 
Um, I'll show you the trigger already. So I'm gonna take a break. I need to get the uh, the barrel wrench out for this thing because uh, I I you know this thing <laughs> I push that down and the bush and starts turning. Right. I mean this thing is accurate as all get out, but this is by far the tightest bushing fit 1911 I've ever owned. So I'm going to take a break and break it down. Be right back. Alright, so I have field stripped this bad boy. Um, <clears throat> I'm glad I didn't film it because I ended up launching the uh, plug across the room and had to go find it. So uh, I don't think, uh, no worse for wear, but that was embarrassing. Um, it did require the wrench. Uh, it was pretty tight, not extremely so, but I didn't want to mess with it on using my hand, especially because I would have to push down on these really sharp edges. So, got this thing broken down, and I was just taking a look at it because this is the first time I actually have broken this thing down. I, w I was inspecting the inside of this thing, and it is, uh, <coughs> it's nice. Um, the rails are smooth. Um, there's just basically like some minor machining marks where it's just I don't even know how to explain it where it's just you can see where it came across the top right there just right here in the middle uh, but the rails are extremely smooth um, anywhere where metal touches metal is just done very well um, guide rod appears to be a simple maybe a Wilson combat type guide rod the barrel already has a polished feed ramp. Um, you can see I did shoot this thing already. I guess tin is pretty dirty already inside there, but uh, you know, barrel appears to have just a little bit of a um, extra band around the end here. That you can see it kind of. I noticed it on my other pair too, where it just comes and then it sort of flares out. And I'm guessing that's to get a nicer pushing fit. Um, very tight there, you can see. You know, nothing prohibitively um, tight, but it is a nice fit there. And then finally, the slide itself, you can see the inside of it again, machined very well, very clean on the inside. I'm just starting to knock some of the finish off the parts that move um, and I've been dry firing this thing a bit and I've shot it I put 10 rounds down it right now so here you go internals very clean very well done um, at some point in the future I'm probably gonna take this down and I'm going to do the polish job on all the moving parts but I gotta tell you I'm gonna have to measure the uh, trigger here just a minute and let y'all know what it is um, because I want to know what this comes out of the box because it's already pretty light so just wanted to show you all the inside of the gun uh, I'm impressed with it um, one of the other things I failed to mention about the exterior of the gun that I didn't like and again this is probably one of the most <laughs> major minor things is that the magwell needs to be beveled, right? Um, you can still hit a lip right there if you try. You can see it vaguely in the video. Um, I'm just gonna have you know take a file to it, clean it up, or Dremel something. Um, is it gonna be a problem? Probably never, but uh. If you're going to use a magwell, you want it to be as smooth as possible. So that's something you can do with a Dremel, or you can take to your gunsmith to clean up, whatever. Um, just a minor issue there. It's just because I'm pretty sure they just bolt on these aftermarket uh, magwells, and um, they're not fit to frame. They're added to frame. So could be use a little bit more cleaning up there. Um, minor issue. So let me... Uh, Put this thing back together and figure out what the uh, trigger weight is. Be right back. One last thing I forgot to mention, and uh, you know, you 1911 guys probably already saw it, but uh, everyone else needs to know that this one is also a Series 80. Um, why you would make a competition gun 
a Series 80's gun. I don't know. Really annoying. You got these extra parts in here where it has to lift them as part of the trigger pull. They have to be lifted. Um, I don't believe it's firing pin safety or drop safety. Um, but what it does is it adds a little bit to your trigger. You can see right there. And that's just this little bit of take up. And probably if I didn't have those parts, I wouldn't need that even that take up. So um, it's probably one of the reasons why this trigger pull is so nice. Um, you can see there is a lack of those parts in there, or a better view is right there. There's no no Series 70 like, or that this is this is a Series 70. This is a Series 80. Um, I'm sure they do it for litigation reasons but it's annoying um, if you're a USPSA shooter you can drop them out and plug it and you'll move about you know you'll just go about your business you can I think remove these uh, in USPSA and no one cares in IDPA they do care and it must remain intact there are ways around it but if you want to keep the gun and the slide together if you want to keep the frame and the slide together it's got to remain intact so uh, that is a minor annoyance, but it doesn't appear to have affected the trigger very much or at all. So there's that. All right, putting this thing back together. Sorry, guys, I keep forgetting things. I wanted to show you all this. The, the smoothness, that fit, is uh, pretty amazing. Right out of the box. There are no places it catches on the slide. That's the series, Ava. There's no places it catches on this uh, except for the hammer when it goes over the hammer that's the only place it catches otherwise this thing slides and glides just like it's supposed to so great slide to frame fit alright YouTube I just got done measuring the trigger weight of this thing and I was very very surprised um, this thing comes in at over a four and a half pound trigger um, <coughs> I say it's surprising because it feels pretty damn good. Um, it actually feels like a much lighter trigger. I was really surprised when my scale, which only goes up to 72, 72 ounces down there, only goes up to 72, kept going before it would break. So I bet this is like a five pound trigger. I bet it's right there. Um, it's got such a great wall and it's such a great 1911 trigger which all 1911 triggers even when they're kind of bad are pretty great um, that it feels like a much lighter trigger even though it's probably a found five pound trigger it feels lighter um, you just kind of see my my quick measurements there the uh, after just a polish job which I did on my own last time on this one we got the expert down to uh, four and a quarter so I would imagine if I polish this I'll get this trigger down to four and a quarter. Uh, the gunsmith uh, did that trigger job and it got it down to three and a quarter. So um, it's probably going to be worth me taking this uh, Pro Custom into the um, <coughs> gunsmith and getting it professionally done. Uh, right now it still feels like a pretty dang good trigger. Uh, you get right up there, no hardly any pre travel and just it clicks so out of the box you're not going to have any trouble shooting this I can go and tell you if you do have want a lighter trigger pull probably all you need to do is polish it uh, Nick Taylor's got a great guide on that and if that's still not good enough for you you can go the uh, gunsmith route and get an even better trigger uh, but that's all I got for this um, Pair USA Pro Custom 40 uh, used to be called a P16 or excuse me P well no P1640 um, great gun looking forward to using it you'll probably see some more videos about it that's all I got for now like um, share subscribe all those YouTube things I uh, appreciate it you uh, give me some feedback you keep uh, you tell me what you want I'll make it um, thanks a lot